Every once in a while, we wanna go ahead and plug in our retro consoles and bathe in that sweet, juicy nostalgia that we all love. And I recently actually got an urge to go ahead and play my GameCube, at least to stream and kind of keep things going. And this started out way back in 2020, which we try not to talk too much about, but this is important. So I went ahead and I got the urge. I went ahead and went to Amazon and I went ahead and bought the cheapest thing that I could go ahead and find. And boy, <laughs> did I realize that you get what you pay for. I'm gonna go ahead and save you some time. In comparison, this mini A2V HDMI, this thing in comparison to the RetroTink Mini 2X, yeah, RetroTink 2X Mini, this is so much more worth it. This is worth the investment if you are into retro gaming. If you just want to go ahead and plug in your random uh, old school console, whether it's uh, GameCube or whatever, for a little bit of fun on a random weekend, this is fine, but ugh, this is great. But there is a caveat, and I want to go ahead and talk about that later on. So let's go ahead and get into it, guys. TGR. Now, I wanna go ahead and start off by just talking about what an upscaler is and what it does between the two of them, uh, because this is important, especially when it comes to playing video games. Now, most people, they don't think about this, but if you are into digital media or you are an editor of any kind, you understand that whenever you upscale something, you have to use uh, specific algorithms or a specific method in order to uh, pretty much get the look that you want. Uh, each one has its pros and cons, so on and so forth. But um, there are three main ones that most people go ahead and use whenever they're upscaling anything, by cubic, by linear, and nearest neighbor. The one that as a gamer, I want is nearest neighbor. And here's why. Nearest neighbor goes ahead and gets the pixels that are there. And if they're a square, they will go ahead and replicate them as much as they can. Now, nearest neighbor, when you're, ever you're using uh, an upscaler like DLSS with NVIDIA or whatever it may be, there's these little jagged edges that pop up. That is called aliasing, and anti-aliasing comes in to kind of like smooth that out and make it nice and pretty. But whenever you're playing a 2D game, like let's say A Link to the Past or a Super Mario Brothers 3, you want to go ahead and keep that pixel edge intact. That's where Nearest Neighbor goes ahead and comes in. If you're using bicubic or bilinear, they're actually more akin towards human faces and just the real world around us. If you go ahead and take a 1080 image and you go ahead and upscale it using bicubic or bilinear, you're gonna go ahead and get a much better image if it is a face versus Mario's face. So I want to go ahead and talk about why this is so important because when I got the AV2 HDMI, I immediately plugged it in, I started streaming, I started having a good time, but I quickly realized that the image wasn't that great. Uh, it <laughs> looked super blurry, at least it did on stream, and even on my end as well. It looked very blurry, and I didn't really enjoy how it looked. It didn't look the way that I remembered it. And this could be in part because I'm getting a 480 image and I'm blowing it out of proportion and trying to go ahead and get it to 720 or 1080, depending on the setting that you have on the actual upscaler. And aside from that, it, it was great. It, it was really fine. It just could have been better. And that's really where the RetroTINK 2X Mini comes into play. The thing is that like, this isn't the most expensive thing out there. It's not the top dog. There is of course the RetroTINK Pro as well as the open source scan converter. This is essentially the holy grail in regards to retro gaming in uh, either a streaming format or just playing on modern televisions by today's standards. But there is a little bit of a workaround when it comes to the open source scan converter, or I'll be referring to it as the OSSC. Now the OSSC is great in regards to everything, but it also comes with a bit of a price tag as well. And if you're serious into retro gaming on modern consoles or modern televisions, this might be the way for you. But for me, as I'm dabbling into it, and as you might be dabbling into it, this is actually a great option. Now, I do want to go ahead and talk about the differences between the two because there really is a little bit of a difference. In regards to the AV2 HDMI, there's an input for everything. There's an output, very simple, plug and play. Uh, there is a USB power adapter as well as a 780 and 1080p switch in between the two, but that's it. Very easy, very simple. You just plug it in and go. But the image that comes out to it, again, 
is more of that bilinear look in regards to everything. When it comes to the RetroTINK 2X Mini, there's actually a lot of cool things that, that happen in this plug and play format. First and foremost, there's S-Cable support as well as the RCA, uh, which is actually really cool because a lot of people, they might just have RCA that's just sitting around and that's the wire that they have and they don't actually have to have a specific converter for each and every single console that they have. They just go ahead and plug it in, boom. Dunskies, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, there is a filter that uh, is put into place. Uh, this filter is more geared towards 3D games. For example, if you're playing PlayStation 2, that's something that is there for you if you wanna go ahead and play Snake Eater. But if you want to go ahead and plug in your uh, SNES, you can go ahead and play A Link to the Past or Super Mario World without any issues whatsoever. It's really cool, I just, I, don't think it's something that kind of uh, makes or breaks it in, in regards to everything. I prefer to just have the filter on period and call it a day, at least while I'm playing GameCube games. I did test this out using uh, Metroid Prime and that intro screen. So you can go ahead and kind of see the different versions on everything. Overall, I felt like the lag was nearly non-existent with the RetroTINK 2X Mini. I thought that it was a much pleasurable experience rather than just plugging it in onto a 1080 or a 4K television that has RCA inputs on the back because even in game mode, there is a lot of lag that is put into this. And I'll go ahead and I'll link to the video up top. That way you can go ahead and see the differences between everything. I don't have the equipment to go ahead and test these things, but based on other people's research, it's there, it's evident. And lag can make or break a gaming experience as we all know. The one drawback that I have to say about the RetroTINK 2X Mini is literally the price. That is it. Right now, as of right now, it's $79.99 from their store. And I think that if you're into gaming, even if you're into streaming, this is worth it. You can go ahead and plug this into any capture card that you have and it'll work just fine. If you aren't streaming, it'll plug directly into any TV or any source AV receiver that has an HDMI input and it'll go ahead and pass straight through without any issues. I've tested this myself, no problems at all whatsoever, but at the end of the day, it is a steep price and this might not be for everyone. So if you have the extra cash and you're willing to go ahead and go for it, Go for the RetroSync 2X Mini. You're going to go ahead and appreciate it. If you don't and you're okay with crappier visuals in regards to your gaming, then this might be the way to, for you to go. For me personally, like I said, this is worth it 110%. I would recommend this any day of the week to anyone that is even interested in retro gaming on modern TVs. But what do you guys think? Have you guys had an opportunity to go ahead and test this out yourselves? Do you know someone that is interested in retro gaming? shoot them this video. Obviously, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, stay up to date, and comment with whatever comments you want, and join our Discord, because, you know, good times. Anyways, guys, I will catch you on the flip side. Until next time, guys, deuces. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more and stay up to date, subscribe, hit the little bell, and join our Discord. If you want to support the channel, please check out our Patreon or hit the join button below. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.